Hello folks, this is my review of the Triple Alt Designs Fast Pack EDC Backpack. There are a lot of features on this bag and I have it stuffed right now to show you its shape when it's fully loaded. It's kind of a wedgish, uh, wider at the bottom, narrows down at the top, fat towards the bottom again, narrows down as it comes up to this top area here. So first, the specs on the bag. It comes in black, foliage green, and coyote khaki. This is the coyote khaki color. It's constructed of 1000 denier in Vista Kodura fabric, reinforced with Hapalon fabric at strategic points. It has reverse YKK zippers and ITW Nexus buckles, and numerous strap keepers, which I really like. They're all over the bag. The bag is 12 inches wide, 22 inches tall, and 7 inches deep, which gives it a volume of 1,800 cubic inches, or 3.1 liters. The weight of the bag is 72 ounces, or 4.5 pounds. There is molly on the sides, on the top, and on the, on the pocket. There is also molly on the back here, as well as the beaver tail. The other side, the bottom of the bag, has more molly, and then the waist belt and the shoulder straps also have molly on them. There is also a nice Velcro area here um, towards the top of the bag that you can put morale patches on, identification patches. It runs the entire uh, width of the bag. The bag has two side pockets uh, that are identical on each side. There is also a hidden zipper pocket on the bottom, which the manufacturer calls a flashlight cape. There is a retention ring up inside of that pocket. There is also a pocket hidden behind the beaver tail right here on the back of the pack. Uh, there is a admin pocket right here that runs about half the height of the bag and then inside the bag there is a mesh pocket and I'll show you that when I when we get to that. There is also a pocket for a hydration bladder uh, with multiple uh, attachment points inside here it will fit a Camelback water bottle or any other manufacturer's brand as well. So now I'm going to flip the bag over and we're going to move to the belt and the shoulder straps and give you an overview of those. The backpack has a nice load bearing waist belt. This waist belt is removable. It is held on by Velcro inside of here. Uh, the buckle and the belt are nice and wide so it sits nicely on your waist and your hips. Helps carry the load of the backpack very nicely. There are also some retention straps that grab on the corner of the bag to help center the load on your back. Again, there is a strap keeper. This is nice because the belt is now attached to the backpack in three points. It's attached on each corner and it's attached in the center with the Velcro. So very nice waist belt. I like it. The back of the pack is padded with closed cell foam that's covered by this mesh. Notice the, the hypalon there that's reinforced for the mesh at your lower back. Notice also the air channels for venting on your back as well. The shoulder straps are contoured. They are nicely padded. There is a sternum strap in the middle that is adjustable at two points. When you look at the shoulder straps down at the bottom, you'll notice there are two quick release buckles. In case you need to ditch the bag quickly, you can release these and the bag will fall off your back. Notice also that there are some strap keepers down here for the excess strap, and that is on both sides. As we move up the shoulder straps, there are D-rings for attaching, there's molly for attaching, and there are also elastic loops for your hydration bladder tubing. As you move up to the very top of the shoulder straps, they are attached to the pack with some more webbing and a couple glides. And you have two load lifter straps. And these load lifter straps also double as compression straps at the top of the bag. Notice there are some strap keepers here as well 
to keep everything looking nice and neat for you from flopping all over the place. On the top of the bag, you will find a reinforced handle and underneath that is the hydration port. And again, that is reinforced uh, with the Hypalon fabric as well. So let's move to the bottom of the bag. When we look at the bottom of the bag, there's obviously Molly down here. There are also two ice axe loops that are here, two drainage holes, and then there are two straps for attaching a sleeping bag, tent, um, shelter, whatever you might want. Again, there are strap keepers here. I just have the straps run underneath the molly to keep them out of the way um, for it, and then wound up with the strap keepers. So a lot of flexibility with the bottom of the pack as well. When we look at the back of the pack, this is the beaver tail. The beaver tails you can put stuff into. Um, notice also that the beaver tail acts as compression straps for the bag as well if you do not have anything in there or even if you do it's going to put some pressure down on the bag notice there are four strap keepers here as well to keep the you know you still have some stuff kind of flapping around in the middle but out on the sides you do not the beaver tail is also completely removable if you want to reduce the tactical look of the bag so if you take the beaver tail off, this is what it looks like. You see the pocket, but you really only see a couple rows of the pale molly webbing. Um, what you do then is you lengthen out your compression straps and you connect them across in the middle. And that uh, allows you, or you just, you know, zip them back down a little bit and wind up the strap keepers in order to keep them from flopping around. And they'll just stay to the sides of the bag. Either way, you have some flexibility. Just wanted to show you what the bag looks like with the beaver tail removed. This bag does have an internal frame. In the hydration pouch, there is a pocket that has an aluminum stay in an HDPE plastic sheet that helps the bag keep its shape and help you bear the load with it riding on your back. You can remove that if you don't like it. Uh, personally, I do like it. It gives some shape to the bag. The other thing you'll notice is that this bag is kind of slanted on the bottom, and that was kind of a complaint from folks that it tended to tip over. Uh, when you have, a, have it loaded up, it does tend to be a little bit tippy, but it makes the, the weight of the bag slide in towards your hips and helps you when you're bearing the load on your back. So I'd be more concerned about how the bag fits on my back than how the bag fits on the ground. So, where some people see that as a detraction, I see that as a bit of a plus. Okay, I went over an overview of the bag. Now I kind of want to show you how I use the bag and how I use the various pockets. I have the bag now open on my table surface. Here you can see the mesh pocket that I told you about that was inside the, the front lid and it only extends down about halfway. I tend to use this for small objects that might get lost in the, in the bottom of the pack. There are no other organizational pockets inside the bag. There are, however, a couple of different ways that you can attach your uh, hydration bladder. Uh, there's four different attachment points in here. Not sure if you can see all of these in here. And I want you to see what the depth of the bag looks like before I put my water bladder in there. I have a three liter Camelback right here. Um, I did try using a three liter narrow uh, water bladder, but it tended to bottom out on the bottom of the bag uh, because some of these hangers, it would hang down a little bit low into the pack. This brought the weight of the water a little bit higher up between my shoulder blades. Um, and I wanna to, want to show you how much room this actually takes out of your internal compartment because that is something that you need to think about. So one second while I put that in there and I'll show you uh, once it's done. Okay, so I've inserted the water bladder into the hydration pouch. Not sure how well you can see this. The water bladder does take up a fair amount of room. It starts about a hand's width down. It ends about a hand's width up from the bottom of the pack. Um, and then it comes in on the sides and then it punches into your storage area. The a plastic frame and aluminum stay that is in the pack pushes the water bladder into your storage area. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. If you fill up your three liter water bladder totally full, it's gonna take storage room away from you. 
Uh, I have noticed that when I fill up the water bladder and I have this pack totally full, um, the plastic sheet does not stay flat to my back. It does tend to kind of roundy a bit um, on the pack, especially if I try to tighten down the, the load lifting straps and the side compression straps. So for those reasons, I usually do not fill my three liter water bladder all the way up. Normally it's probably about one and a half to two liters and I carry a 32 ounce um, stainless steel canteen on one of the waist belts in a pouch for it. Okay, moving on. So the side pockets, they are fairly, fairly wide. Uh, you can put a lot of stuff in there. A Nalgene bottle, 32 ounce, this is a stainless steel one, does fit in here, um, but you can't really get it zipped closed. And it kind of flops around in there. If you take a tumble or you put the pack down, your water bottle is going to come out. And that's one of the reasons I do not carry my water bottle in the side pockets. I'll carry binoculars, gloves, other small items that I use quite frequently will go in here. Um, and again, my water bottle I'll hang in a pouch off of the, uh, the waist belt. Now, on the other side of this pack, I did show you that there is the, what the manufacturer calls the flashlight cape right here with the retention ring. Um, this does share space with the side pocket here, so that's something you do have to keep in mind. If you're going to use the bottom pocket, it's going to steal space from your side pocket. Normally, I do not carry a flashlight in here. I find it kind of hard to reach to get this zipper undone, uh, but what I do keep in there is a rain cover. Uh, inside of there. So if you uh, watch my uh, 10 to 30 mile get home bag video, you'll see how I use that rain cover and why. Um, but two side pockets on either side, molly on either side. Again, you can hear, see the compression strap with a strap keeper for it. When we look on the back of the pack, at the top there is an admin pocket. Not sure if you're going to be able to see in here, but it's the full half depth of this lid. Comes all the way down. Um, there are several pen sleeves and a couple flat pockets inside of there uh, that you can store uh, numerous small items inside. Obviously, I keep a pen, pencil, write in the rain, notepad, uh, my iPod, uh, my iPhone when I'm hiking, anything along those lines will go in there. Um, some folks have complaints that it's hard to get to, but it, it pucks open pretty well. Uh, so I've never really had a problem, and I can put quite a few things in there. My multi-tool normally rides in there, a knife if it's not in my pocket. Um, lower down on the pack, there is a nice um, wide pocket that goes the entire width of the bag. It's about two inches wide all the way across. Um, normally I store my food in here. So mountain house meals, um, food bars, cliff bars, anything to eat generally goes in this, goes in here. Now again, I have the beaver tail removed. Beaver tail for me was great for carrying a uh, helmet, carrying uh, rain gear, an extra thermal layer, great for that. Um, it also has a pocket on the inside of it that you can put a firearm stock into or a fishing pole or skis. Their website says snowboard, but I've never seen a snowboard that was that narrow, so I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, but let me put this back on here and I'll show you how uh, you can use the beaver tail to carry a firearm. Okay, so here's how I'd use the beaver tail. I'm using my daughter's highly lethal pop gun. It has been safety checked to make sure that it's no longer loaded. Uh, but you'd put the stock down in the pocket and then you use the two retention straps to keep the firearm from bouncing around and, and uh, move it in towards your back. There are, you can lower the beaver tail down to give you some greater length if you're carrying a longer uh, firearm than my daughter's little pop gun here but that shows you how you can uh, utilize the beaver tail. And you could use it for a fishing pole, set of skis, uh, anything else that's kind of long and narrow, maybe your trekking poles, um, you know, some wood that you might pick up along the trail. So that's how you would use the beaver tail. Well, that concludes my review of the Triple Alt Designs Fast Pack EDC. I like the numerous features and flexibility of this bag. It's very well constructed, it rides well on my back, I can put a fair amount of gear in it. I tend to use it for a two to three day bag um, or a medium distance get home bag. So hopefully this review was helpful to you in seeing the size of the bag and the different features that are there. 
If you have any questions, please submit them as comments. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you, and as always, please subscribe. Thank you.